Now, the I newspaper has looked into Labour's plans to fix bus services if they win the next general election. They're promising to bring failing companies under public control, something that's actually already happening in Manchester. Now, Labour says that there's a postcode lottery and that they'll reverse the decline without spending loads of central government money. But the Tories say that that's just nonsense and that this is nationalisation, it won't work and it will cost a great deal of money. Research shows that about 16 million miles of route have been lost, routes have been lost since 2010. So is it time to nationalise the bus service across the country or would that just be an expensive failure? You can give us a call on this 0207 862 and we'll speak to you in just a moment. Dom, what do you think? Do you take the bus often? I do take the bus uh, as much as I can, and I certainly take a lot of trains. And I think, so again, I am no economist. Uh, I have no idea how this should exactly work. But it seems to me the thing that I really think is a disgrace in this country is our public transport infrastructure. Not only the fact that it, it's been axed so much and, it, and there's less and less, but the fact uh, that it is so expensive to take a train, uh, well, the fact that bus routes are absolutely just going and people can't get to places. You can get to Manchester to Malaga cheaper than you can get to Manchester Tell me to about Cornwall. It. I could probably fly here than I, mm. quicker than I could. It is honestly a disgrace. And when I go to places like France, and again, I can't, I don't know how this works, but they have their, their public transport slightly better. I mean, it's just cheap, it's affordable, it works. And I think it's such an important part of the country, of lots of things, of levelling up, getting people out of London. Why would you do that? I mean, it costs insane amount of money. If you go from Glasgow to London, I mean, it was you'd never do that. You'd I never take the train. the counter-argument to nationalisation would be, let's think about the things that the government are responsible for, the NHS, mm. the education system. Yeah. I mean, Water. we've got crumbling walls in, but in at, schools. At the, but at the, NHS at the very the least, the idea that these things are up for profit and they're not. They're things that should be for everyone. When they sold off the railways, they didn't even sell the railway at least to one company that could do it. Well, that they sold off lovely. every little bit of it from yeah. tracks to... Yeah. It's just been done so perfectly. It shouldn't be for profit. It does feel like there's a disconnect. Yeah. Like... Uh, I'm not into nationalisation for anything. Nationalisation, as far as I'm concerned, doesn't work. This country nearly went bankrupt in the 20 years after the war because everything was nationalised. But I am in favour of efficiency. Now, from your part of the world, you'll remember Ang Logue and Brian Souter, who ran Stagecoach, oh, yeah. right? Very successful, very, very successful. They ran good, efficient, uh, what used to be public transport services, like buses and trains, all over the country, and they ran them very well. When Richard Branson was given the franchise for the West Coast Line, Virgin Trains, and I used to use them all the time to go to Liverpool and Manchester, incredibly efficient. So what I'm saying is, I don't want them nationalised, but I want them run by people who know what they're doing, not civil servants, right, and to make them efficient. The other thought I had was, is that we've read a few stories over the last week or two about the massive amount that local authorities raise in parking fines, right, oh. in their own towns. Mm -hmm. Don't get Why me can't that money be used to subsidise the bus services because in it's those towns? Busy being used to subsidise the lights it, and the it, bin collection. It, 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 it should be used to get people in and out of those towns to make those towns more prosperous, OK? There... And, 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 and come up with a good bus service. Where I come from in Chester, I went back a, a, a year or so ago, and my number nine bus, which I used to get to school and all that, mm -hmm. I couldn't find it. And um, guess what? In my day, it was three old pence to get to school on the number nine bus. It's now about £4.30. That's inflation, It's, it's ludicrous. Is there not a halfway house, though, between full nationalisation and this kind of free-for-all privatisation? Well, that's what they did on the railways, well, didn't they? But that's what I'm hoping, is that somewhere... Because, obviously, one of the problems of nationalisation is, is incentive, isn't it, for yeah. people? And I think there is a way if they get some kind of uh, stake in it. And there are places yeah. that do that. Yeah. Sort of... I don't know what you uh, call it. Uh, and once again, there's a huge imbalance between the resources people in London can access and those in the rest of the country. Well, that is now, absolutely right. Now, every time I go on Oxford Street, I see about eight buses in a queue with nobody on them. And, and where I... On Oxford Street, yeah. there's never a bus with nobody I, I, on them. I do, I do. I well, don't believe it. Well, I do. I look at them all the time and I think, where are all those buses going? I live in Stockbroker Belt, Surrey, and it goes in... Uh, excuse me, and it goes in and out of Greater London, OK, and there's loads of buses. I mean, like, loads of buses. But when so you get... you're all right, is well, what you're saying. Yeah, thought, yeah. But stockbrokers what, would have but, taken the bus much. But, but, no, well, you know, there are older people who need the buses okay. and that kind of stuff. But when you get outside of Greater London, 
Diana outside the home counties nothing. and go in the north. I, I totally agree. It's an absolute mm. disgrace, and particularly for old people and people who live in I rural totally agree. areas. And, and they're not, they're not, the, the bus routes are not being thought of of what people need and, and ones that are not necessarily economically viable just cut straight away. It was actually their lifelines for people. They're the only way that people yeah. get yeah. places. So. Yeah. Well, let's find out how you feel at home about your bus service. David from Cheshire, what do you think about the, the bus service near you? Uh, pardon? What do you think about the bus service near you? Do you take the bus often? No. no. Certainly not. Why because, not? Uh, I do believe on three days a week to say there's nearby crew, which is 12 miles away, right. there are three buses each way on three days a week. They've closed the banks and everything else. If you've got to go to crew to your b branch of, of bank, it can take you over half a day. Right. Well, that doesn't sound good at all. So you're saying no. to get to somewhere you need to go in order to visit your bank, yeah. you've only got three buses that could yeah. take you there in a day? And a I'm an old age pensioner, 77. I am thinking when I, I am going to apply for my renewed driving licence this year, mm. next year, uh, next time, I don't think I shall be driving. So how I will get about, I do not know. Is that what you, David? How I will deal with things financially, I do not know. David, does that worry you then, how you're going to get about? Yes. It's an interesting because thing, actually, if we could sort out bus disabled. services. It's in the government's interest because it seems mm, that's right. to me that it would get more cars off the road. Yeah, of course it would. If there was a, if there was a, a very so maybe efficient... there is an interest for the government to do it right. Well, it, in Come my on, in my view, it makes sense. no, in my view, it's it's in the government's interest to produce incentives to get companies to run the things properly. Do you see what I mean? I don't want it nationalised, but I do want the incentive... To... Look, the railways run on the basis of subsidies from the government to Richard Branson to run Virgin. Am I right? And it was very efficient. That same system should be introduced on buses. Well, I think some people would question whether it was a very yeah. efficient... I've, well, heard, I've uh, heard horror stories about all these... Uh, I've never had a bad trip on, a, on that Virgin train. I'm mm. sticking up here for uh, Sir Terence Leahy and uh, Richard Branson. So the I'm, cats. I'm the friend of the... You're Yes, yeah, successful businessman. Yeah. David, I, I absolutely hear your concern and your worry and appreciate it greatly. Who would you trust to sort this problem out? Private companies, maybe your local council, or the government as a central body to nationalise the bus service completely? Uh, I've got, I don't know whether I'm right in saying this, an expert in the local council because... Yeah. What I've seen is the government make an absolute pig's ear of everything. <laughs> when well, I was a little lad, yes, seventy odd years ago, you could go from Twemlow, which is near Jodrell Bank, to Sandbach. Yeah, yeah, I know it. I'm there. And the buses ran every twenty minutes yeah. circular. Shuttle yeah, buses, which would be very, yeah. very helpful. Yeah. Uh, David, thank you very much for your call. I'm not sure we know who should be put in charge of, of running the buses yet. But I think it's Mike, it we might... <laughs> Well, I, I can tell you what it shouldn't be, local authorities. Look at the number of local authorities which have gone bankrupt because they can't but run they their towns properly. But they would argue they're underfunded. But they can't run their towns properly and, and they've got huge numbers of people now on enormous salaries, they've got big pension funds. So the answer is your friends you meet at football. This is, this is what we've come to. Yeah. No, 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 no. My answer is if you bring in people who have already got a track record of success, you know, in one one business, they can produce it and do it in another. So I've heard good? shocking things. I'm sorry about that Richard Branson line. So uh, I haven't. Well, did you travel on it a lot yourself? I didn't. No. No. Well, I did, and yeah. believe me, I never had a bad trip. But that's because you're mates. I, I travelled. Maybe, you got, <laughs> maybe they knew you were coming and gave no, you a special no, trip. I'm not mates of Richard Branson, <laughs> although I did stay on his island, Necker, in the. Hello. Oh, right, oh, it's all coming out now. Story. Here we go. <laughs> uh, Bill from Manchester, you're up next. What's your thoughts on nationalising the bus service? I certainly agree with Andy Burnham. I think they should be left to local authorities and uh, the Greater Manchester 10 uh, local authorities. Well, uh, that works if you've got a mayor like, uh, you know, Andy yeah. Burnham. But what if it, you're in Birmingham and the, the council's already in absolute dire straits or all the other councils mm. that are in financial ruin at the moment? Do you think they need Indeed. the added pressures of taking the buses under their control too? Oh, well, yes. I mean, I've, uh, I've noticed the last few years... Uh, I'm retired now, 76... 
Um, I used to work in adult social care for the local authority, and uh, buses didn't turn up. Uh, I was told that according to their satellite, you know, invoking the computer nonsense to prove someone wrong, that it was there. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, I actually wrote a letter to Stagecoach that were appalling. But they've cut back on inspectors. You never see a bus inspector smoking and smoking cannabis. It makes me physically sick on the buses. Uh, okay, nobody so to check on the behaviour of some people late at night and all kinds of things like that that I mean, uh, you didn't used to see. Yeah, when you, you look at what they're doing in the real networks when they're taking away conductors and they're taking away people from platforms and they're taking away mm. um, you know, people you can buy the tickets from in, in replace of these, this technology that they're bringing in, I'm not sure that tide is going to turn even if it does become nationalised, but you would like to see more ticket inspectors on buses, someone there to hold people yes, on the bus accountable like for their behaviour? See them clamping down on smoking, which they never do. Uh, and I've got mild asbestosis for about my uh, time, possibly in industry. It's been static for five years. But it, uh, breathing that muck and the drivers breathe it in as well. Uh, whether they, you know, they, a hell of a lot of people smoke cannabis on a bus. Yeah. I've nothing against the stuff if it's in tablet form. They wouldn't need tobacco then. But uh, uh, on a bus, uh, what is public this bus, bus service? I need it. But Bill, in, in Manchester, aren't you? Uh, don't you have the benefit of a very good tram system? Yeah. Because when I go yes, to Manchester and I get off at Piccadilly and I want to go to Old Trafford, it, it always seems to work. Yeah, but, uh, but it depends where you're posted in your work. Uh, I'm, I'm not working now, but it certainly affected me with one bus an hour on a Sunday when I'd finished a 12-hour. Uh, mm. uh, you were allowed to sleep in. Saturday, Sunday shift, and you couldn't get the bus. Mm. Um, uh, and so you the trams, were told the trams aren't very good for you, yeah. then? Is it not a, a... I thought it was a parallel system. You know, it, it is it, it is to a degree uh, that, that they can link in, but it doesn't cover everywhere. I would have loved, you know, to yeah. live in June where I was working for a so, while, people in their own house. Bill, I'm just interested. You're talking a lot about the past. Now that it has been taken over by the council and it's council run, do you think that it works better? Uh, I think it would, but they, they do need the money to put in if they're going to um, employ inspectors. Uh, and uh, uh, clamp down and, and proper fines for people smoking on the buses. But, but, Actually, but Bill, they're, they're, I mean, they're, it's already run by the council. Have you seen an improvement? That's what I want to know. I, I haven't seen an improvement now, no. Uh, this, the, the, the buses and the private buses and God knows what, yeah. Okay. Mm. Uh, Bill, thank you very much for your call and insight into Manchester, actually, who are doing it slightly differently already. And from Cheshire, what's your thoughts on bus services? Does the council need to take it under control, the government? Absolutely, the council should do it. And it's like any business, you can whinge on about the fact that there are cutbacks, but if you don't invest in a business, mm. then it's not going to take off. And the thing is, what they've done is they've, the Tories over the years have gradually eroded it and cut down and cut down and cut down and cut down. And yet you can see that Manchester's turned around completely. I mean, to me, my daughter lives in London. As you say, there are buses about every seven minutes. Yeah. And if I go to Manchester... Uh, not only have I got the, you know, the nationalised transport of the buses, but they have a free bus that runs around the city. Oh. Now, I understand it's a city, but having said that, they had the political mindset to get together, mm. take on the privatised companies and say it is feasible. And they've demonstrated to me it's absolutely brilliant. Whereas That's in Macclesfield, where I live, Macclesfield, buses stop at tea time on Saturday and there are none on Sundays. Well, it's just interesting that we've had two calls there, back to back, mm. Bill and, and yourself, Anne, who say two different things about Manchester. He Absolutely, hasn't seen any yeah. improvement, but, but you have. And certainly in London, where um, it's run by TfL, I don't, I mean, we do grumble. I don't think we can grumble that much because no, it is no. much better than it is the rest of the country.